Welcome back to The Code Wolf. Today we're going to explore the changes in .NET 9 for working with OpenAPI. We'll explore what's new and how those new features can be combined with the tools we've worked with for quite a while now to get the best of both worlds. Along the way, we'll also review some OpenAPI essential concepts as a refresher or in case you're new to the subject. Let's get started. Please remember to hit subscribe to support the channel and to stay tuned for all kinds of upcoming .NET 9 content. It really helps out a lot. Okay, so starting in .NET 9, we now have an official package from Microsoft that's designed to add built-in support for generating open API docs. As a refresher, the open API spec provides a standardized language agnostic way to describe HTTP APIs so they can be interfaced with by humans and computers without access to the source code. This is useful for API management, exposing services to other parties, development and testing considerations, and plenty of other scenarios. Now, historically, up through .NET 8, .NET developers have relied on the Swashbuckle package to add support for generating and testing open API docs. Microsoft decided to stop relying on the Swashbuckle package due to concerns around the long-term support of that project and because of some other design and architectural goals. They've published quite a bit of material out there that goes deeper into their reasoning, so I'll include some links in the description below for details. For now, let's explore these changes in action using a sample app. All right, so I have a .NET 9 web API project open here. And this is using the minimal API template. So down here, we just have a simpler handler method. And if you've been working with .NET for a while now, this should look mostly familiar from an open API perspective. So we have our add swagger gen line here, and this registers some tooling to actually handle generating our open API document based on our endpoints and things like that. And then we have a couple lines here to set up a UI to interact with that. So swagger provides tooling to both generate and interact with open API specification documents. So let's run this app and just review a few key concepts here, especially if you're not quite as familiar with open API. So when the app loads, we get this nice UI, and this provides different interaction points with our endpoints. So we have the slash weather forecast, and we can test this out and execute a method. And sure enough, we get our results back. So that's cool, uh, but nothing too surprising or new here if you've been working with open API in .NET. Now it also gives us this link to a Swagger file if I zoom in here. So if we open this up in a new tab, this is an open API document. So open API as a reminder is a specification that helps you describe the behavior or capabilities of your endpoints. So what endpoints are available and how those might behave and what their response data will look like and things like that. So up until now, we've relied on the Swagger UI tooling for the most part in .NET to generate these documents. And these can be consumed by tooling or cloud services or various other integration services and tools that might want to connect to or manage your API. So that's what we use these documents for. Now, starting in .NET 9, there are some pretty significant changes. So if we go back to our app, there's a new package directly from Microsoft in the ASP.NET Core team. So if we look at our project here. .NET 9 projects now include this open API package, and I'm assuming in future tooling it will update automatically to use those, but right now it's included with the template at least. And we can actually use this package now instead of the Swagger tooling to set up our open API docs. Now this package down here, this swashbuckle, this is the one that we've always been using for a while now, and this is what the app is currently set up to use. And then we'll look at nSwag in a moment, but for now, Let's just focus on the fact that we have this new open API package that helps us to manage open API document generation. So I'm gonna comment out the swagger line that we've depended on for a while now. And instead, let's say builder.services.addOpenAPI. And this is gonna register services from that official Microsoft package to generate our open API specification document. Now we also no longer need these two lines here for this use swagger and swagger UI tooling. So I'm just gonna comment those out here. And then there's one last step here. So we also need to use our app object here and say map open API. And all that this does is generate an endpoint that we can use to reach the document that's generated by the services registered up here. So there's just two steps to implement this new package, which is really nice. So there's a step to register services that generate the document 
and then a step to add an endpoint to reach that document. So if we were to run our app, let's see what this gives us now. And so you might get a 404 when you run this initially, and that's totally fine. But to view the document that was generated, we can go to slash open API slash v1 dot JSON. So this is the new file that was generated by that official Microsoft ASP.NET Core package. And as you can see, that's reachable at that endpoint. So again, it's slash open API slash v1 dot JSON. So that's the name of our document. It's versioned by default, but this still includes the essential information about our API and it's all provided by official packages now. So that's pretty cool, but you might be thinking, well, what about my UI? I miss that. I like using that UI. Well, there's bad news and good news here. So the bad news is that, at least for now, there is no UI option for working with this file from Microsoft. And it sounds like there might not be anytime soon. It seems like that's not really on the roadmap or part of the plan. However, you can easily still integrate this document with those other packages. So if we go back to our project, you can still have this setup that we have here where we're using this official new package, but you can still use the UI part of the Swagger tooling to actually view it. So if I were to just uncomment this one line, we can then use the option object here. And inside of here, we just wanna say options.swagger endpoint. And this method accepts two parameters. So the first one is the URL, and that's gonna be that slash open API slash v1.json that we looked at. And then we give it the name of the file as well, as well. So we can just say v1 here. And this is just going to point that existing Swagger UI tooling that we've been using to our new document that we're generating using this new .NET 9 package. If we were to restart this now, you can see, sure enough, there's our Swagger UI back and it should all work just fine. So if we execute this method, we get our response back. And if we look closely, you can see this URL at the top has changed. Remember, this was originally pointing to the Swagger generated uh, open API doc. But now if we open this, you can see that it's the new official .NET package uh, document here. So we're kind of combining tooling here. So we're using the official .NET 9 packages to generate the file but we're using our existing Swagger UI tooling to actually interact with it. So this third party package is now more of like a UI extension for the built-in functionality. Now, if you don't like this idea of combining options, you can of course just revert back to using only Swagger tooling. However, you'll want to do that with caution because remember the support plan for this tooling is pretty unclear at the moment. And so this new package will be officially supported by Microsoft for years to come. So I would probably advise you to use this setup where you would use the official packages to generate your file, but then you can kind of use whatever UI is available uh, since this is just kind of a development tool to view that file and work with it as you're developing. Now, some of you out there might be thinking, well, I don't use the swashbuckle package. I use an alternative called nswag. And so if we stop the app and we look at our project, I've also installed this nswag.asp.core so this is essentially just an alternative to the swashbuckle package. This has been around for quite a while. Some people prefer to use nswag. Uh, personally, I don't really use it that much, but I'm still gonna show the option here um, in case you want to go with that approach. So the setup is pretty similar. We can just go down here and go to our app object again. And this time we say use swagger UI, but notice that this is with a lowercase i and the swashbuckle one is with a capital I. So if I mouse over this, you can see the namespace is indeed uh, nswag. That can be a little confusing for people, so watch out for that. But let's again say uh, options, and let's open up another object. And here we have to set the options.document path. And this is going to be that slash open API slash v1.json. So similar to our swagger endpoint um, on the swashbuckle configuration up here this time it's document path. And I've found to get this working properly in a friendly way, we also have to set this path option to slash open API. So we actually have to set two values. So this will kind of set where the UI loads and then this kind of points it to the right document that's generated by our .NET tooling. So I'm actually gonna comment this one out just so we don't have two. So I'll comment out the swashbuckle one and we'll rely on the nswag one. Now, I try to be honest with all of you about things I don't know too much about, and honestly, I don't use nswag that much, so I'm not sure why you have to set this additional endpoint and why this can't just be one configuration, but this was the only way I could get it to work, 
So if there's an NSWAG expert out there, feel free to leave a comment for more details about uh, why you have to configure both of these. But the last step to get this working is in your launch settings, you're gonna to wanna to change Swagger to Open API. And you only have to do this if you're working with NSWAG. Um, otherwise it'll load to a 404 when you launch the app. But now let's run the app and see what this gives us. And there we have it. Now we're using NSWAG instead of Swashbuckle. So we set up NSWAG and we pointed it to uh, the Open API docs that was generated by the .NET package. So that's how you would use this in combination with NSWAG. And if you really wanted to get into things, there's actually a third option. So there's another tool called Redoc. And this is kind of an alternative UI that's also provided by the NSWAG package. So if we run this again, uh, that uses the same configuration values since it's from the same package. And you can see we get a different UI here. So this is using Redoc. Personally, I don't really like Redoc, but I know some people do and they use it for various purposes, but that's how you'd set it up if you are using Redoc. So hopefully this clears up a lot of confusion. I really wanted to show how to use these packages in combination, but thanks so much for watching. Please hit subscribe and please hit subscribe to stay tuned for more .NET 9 updates. Thanks a lot.